Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. And today I'm going to show you how to send all your DNS data to Elastic SIM. We want to have DNS events come to our SIM solution so that we can easily analyze and understand how DNS is working in our infrastructure. This video is for those people who want to learn cybersecurity, blue team skills, uh, and to understand how traffic works. It's also for those people who want to know how the Elastic Sim really works. So if you haven't watched our two previous videos or three, uh, please go ahead and watch. I show you how to set everything up. And today is just a continuation where I'm going to show you how to send our DNS traffic from a Windows domain controller into our Elastic Sim for analysis. Why would we want to do this anyway? Why does it matter? Why do we care that uh, we see this DNS traffic? So as you can see on our graph here, we can tell uh, the type of DNS entries that we have. And DNS is very, very critical for our infrastructure to work, right? So we need to see uh, the top domains that our users are accessing, the most queried domains, what times, uh, in this case, the responses are very slow. So if you're having any issues, DNS is one of those things that can cripple your network. You can use this to identify uh, security events. If you're going sending traffic to remote domains that you have no business sending to, say in a different country. So this is very, very important data. And I just to quick, give you a quick overview, you can see the IP addresses, your clients, your DNS uh, traffic in here. This is not the most elegant looking graph, but it does look great after a while. So this is this will show you all your clients. Um, then you can also see right here, as you can see some errors, if there are any, and you can monitor your DNS servers in real time. And this is very, very critical for security. Like I'm saying, I said before, you can see the latency and you can see the errors over time. Uh, so you do not want to see a lot of errors in here, obviously. And above all, you can see raw data. This is really like a gold mine for your infrastructure. Uh, let's go to here. As you can see here again, we can see uh, data by domain. Uh, if you go to the DNS tab here, you can see uh, the top domains that are being queried. Uh, in this case, apple.com is the top one. I have Amazon and Facebook down here. And uh, we can see the bytes, the amount of data that I'm sending. So somebody is streaming in your network, you'll be able to quickly see that Twitch maybe is taking too much bandwidth. Uh, we are using a tool called packet bit and packet bit is an agent you put on your computer uh, it will sniff your interface and it doesn't take any resources really it's very very lightweight as you can see you can see that we can monitor uh http transactions we can monitor databases uh, we can also see tls communications dhcp uh, we can actually see dhcp transactions let's see if we have any in here so as you can see in our lab right now, we do have some DHCP traffic as well. So the quick and dirty way to install it is to just go to your server. So in this case, I'm going to be using uh, this Windows 10 as a client. And you need to go to the documentation and really understand how it works. And here are sample graphs that you can have. You just saw mine. Uh, we need to install. So let's go to the download and open it. Right here, you just need to download the version that you have. For me, it's, I mean, I have a Windows Server 2012, 64-bit. So let's go to the uh, Getting Started Guide. So first, let's go to the Install Packet Bit. And it says we need to download it, which we did. And PCAP, that's so that we can capture and sniff that interface. So I downloaded Packet Bit right here. I also downloaded this little tool, and PCAP. So that's what they're talking about here. Install that one first, run as administrator, because this is going to be sniffing our interface. Then I agree. Uh, yep, install pickup, win pickup API capable. Yep, we want that. Then install that. All right, our installation is complete. So let's go ahead and say next and finish. Next, let's unzip, unzip our packet bit. But before we do that, let's go to our program files, program files new folder let's name it packet bit 
and you notice that this is how you install all these bits and you create a folder for it in here then once it's done let's go ahead and uh, extract all and we're going to extract it into that folder that we created in our C packet bit yeah let's extract it all in there yes let's go so that's going to extract it for us if you really find value in this content please subscribe to my channel it means a lot it tells the youtube youtube algorithm that people like this material it tells me that this time that i'm putting in is worth it so please uh, like this video subscribe and let me know in the comments what you're doing this for are you doing this for work are you doing this for uh to learn so you can get into cyber security are you doing this so you can just know about it uh, so, okay so now let's paste everything back in here do this for all so you want everything in the main packet bit but the reason why i like to leave this one in here is so that i can have a backup just in case i mess up i can always come in here and grab fresh files so that's why i leave it like this so the file that we need to edit right away is this packet bit.yaml but before we go in the packet bit folder let's just make sure that we can edit this so let's go to our properties this is just giving us uh, the permissions so what we want is um, let's edit that for this file um, we want the users for this desktop to have full rights all right now that we have the full rights in our packet bit and everything is unzipped in here let's go to our packet bit.yaml which is this one then in here we need to change the ip address for kibana and our output this time we're sending data to elasticsearch so let's go and send the data to elasticsearch here uh, so our dashboards we're saying yes we want to set up dashboards uh host.kibana uh, set up dot kibana uh, we want it to be to 192.168.5.78 all right that's our kibana host and the same ip address is for our elastic search the 71 so now we changed our kibana in our elastic search let's just file save done so now that we saved it um we installed our pcap stuff so let's go back to our instructions here so we followed these instructions we installed pcap here we downloaded it in in here uh, we renamed it. I, I didn't put any version, but I just named it to packet bit. Open PowerShell run run as an administrator. Okay, so we need to now to do this part, right? Let's uh, run it as administrator to install packet bit. Now that we changed our YAML file. Okay, so PowerShell. Uh, right click, run as administrator. Boom. All right, so now we just need to install packet bit, but we need to be in that directory, right? Program files, and then uh, let's cd to packet bit. All right, now we now that we're in here, uh, let's paste our command to install packet bit. Uh, cannot be loaded because scripts is disabled on this. Okay, so we need to set execution policy. All right, if you say yes, because then we can rerun it again. This time we're able to run it. So now we have packet bit. So we can say start service. But before we start the service, I think we have one more thing that we need to do here. But let's run it with this one. Another part, if you have multiple interfaces, you want to come and make sure that you set it to the right interface. Let's identify our interface because I don't want to, to miss that. Mine, I know that it's always, it always defaults the one. So it says um, zero here. That's my interface. That's my gigabit. So if you go to your configuration file, if you wanted to make sure that you are on the, on the right interface, this is where you, you, you would change it if you have multiple interfaces. But mine is set to zero. That's why I sort of skipped through that part. All right. So after everything is done and we have our interface here it's configured correctly uh, you can load the index in Elasticsearch. i like the alternative method that's what i've always done so i run this one 
my elastic search already has one but i'll show you so if you wanted to just load it in in our elastic search and force it very quickly you'd come in here and then uh, instead of local host here you'd just ch change that to our ip address 192.168.5.71 and voila you loaded it and it was acknowledged here so now we have an in index in our elastic search the only thing that's left for us is to set up kibana dashboards which is what i was showing you at the beginning set up dashboards so if you don't already have packet bit dashboards you run this and it, it will say it's trying to get there and um if kibana is reachable it will work if you have any issues it will show you here all right so we loaded our dashboards now we just need to go back to our um, kibana in a little bit here our machine will show up as a host you you start seeing all the data that i was showing you so now you're monitoring your domain controller that's a windows domain controller it's very very important to monitor uh if you're running any critical databases you want to monitor that if you're running um, web applications in Windows for whatever reason, uh, you want to monitor that. So that's a quick video of how to set up and monitor your DNS using PacketBit. We'll be using this in future videos for uh, detection where I'll, I'll be referring to this dashboard. I just wanted to make sure that you know how to set it up. If you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing and liking my videos. It means a lot to me. Otherwise, I will show you more stuff and what we can set up in the next videos. Thanks for stopping by.